This week we're testing an unusual scooter. It's the answer to the question, what's easier to ride than a kick scooter, faster than a bicycle, and cost less than 500 bucks? Doo -doo -doo. What is this brand new seated electric scooter right here, the GoTrax Flex? You've probably heard of GoTrax because it seems like every other scooter you see on the street says GoTrax on the stem. But recently they've started making conventional e-bikes too in this one unconventional seated scooter, the GoTrax Flex. We've got real world performance numbers on exactly how fast and how far it went. One test result that could be a deal breaker for some, plus an important feature that this scooter has that's missing from pretty much all other seated scooters at this price point. Let's back up a second. What makes this a seated scooter and not an e-bike? The answer is no pedals. This saves a little weight, makes it more compact, and a big one for me, it's not gonna give you a chain stain on the leg of your pants, in the trunk, or on the back seat of your car if you stuff it in there. The Flex is powered by a physically large 350 watt motor in the rear wheel, but I should point out that while motor wattage is one of the most often quoted numbers in electric scooter reviews, it tells you almost nothing about how the scooter will really perform, because it's usually just a rating of how much power the motor can handle, and not how much power the motor controllers are actually sending into it. That's why it's so important for us to test scooters to see how they really perform. I've been testing all week and it's been a lot of fun. The Flex feels lightweight, nimble, and easy to ride. But what's it good for? GoTrax puts it in the commuter category and I think it should make a great bike lane commuter, but you know, without the sweat of pedaling. And when you get to work, it's small enough that you're probably gonna get away with parking it inside. It's also good for running errands because it's easy to lock up and the basket's carrying capacity is rated at 50 pounds. That's almost six gallons of milk. So basically anything that fits in the basket is good to go. My favorite thing about the Flex is also probably the biggest difference between it and other seated scooters at this price point. The Flex has rear suspension. When you're standing up, suspension is a nice to have, but when you're sitting down and a pothole comes along, suspension can make a very big difference. There are actually four things between your butt and the ground. 14 inch tires, dual shocks, seat springs, and the seat itself is super thick. You can even adjust the spring tension to make it stiffer or less stiff using just your hands. There's no front suspension, but the large diameter air-filled tires and the fact that I'm basically sitting on the rear wheel meant that I didn't really miss having suspension up front. The handlebar position is relatively low and it's not adjustable, but I got used to the bar height fairly quickly. The seat height is adjustable though and doesn't require tools, so you can make the flex smaller when you want to put it in the trunk. But when you lock it up, you may also want to lock up your seat or take it with you to make sure you still have a seat when you get back. The Flex has a twist throttle, which as a motorcyclist, I absolutely love. The throttle response is ultra smooth, but no matter how hard you twist it, it's not gonna give you an adrenaline rush. Acceleration is typical for its price class, and if you've ridden a rental scooter, it feels pretty similar, arriving at 15 miles per hour in 7.7 .7 seconds. You don't need to kick off to get it moving because the Flex is set up for zero start, but it still helps. Between the super chill riding position and the adrenaline free throttle response and bicycle sized tires, the Flex is about as unintimidating a scooter as we've ridden. The tested top speed was just a touch faster than most sharing scooters at 16.1 miles per hour. This is also a little faster than the top speed most people are able to sustain when riding a bicycle. So it scoots right along on flat ground and slight inclines, but you need to know that seated scooters in this price range really struggle when it comes to climbing steep hills, and the GoTrax Flex is no different here. Any hill that would make you want to downshift and or pedal standing up on a bicycle is really gonna slow you down on most seated scooters. Much to its credit, the Flex still conquered our steep 10% grade test hill, albeit very slowly. The reason they have a hard time uphill is seated scooters use larger diameter wheels, which give you more stability and a smoother ride, but that means the motor turns fewer times between the bottom of the hill and the top, so it's like climbing a hill in a higher gear on a bicycle. But how does it do with heavier riders on flat ground? Let's go find out. Hey Ramir, what do you think? I think it's pretty cool, not bad. All right, here, let's uh, take the V-Box and let's go see how fast it'll go with you riding it. Let's get these numbers. And I'm back, Paul. All right, well, let's check the app and see what kind of speed you got up to. Okay. Oh, it shows about 15 miles per hour, 15.1. Oh, nice. Okay, so I got 16.1 and you got 15.1 on flat ground, so not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. 
Yeah. I don't. I think it's a good cruiser. I don't know how I feel going up a hill though. Yeah, it's surprising how different this feels on on flat ground. It feels like pretty spunky and kind of gets along on flat ground, but on hills, like yeah, you definitely feel it start slowing down right away. Yeah. I like the build quality as well. One thing I noticed when I got on it, it didn't sink. It didn't. It didn't like buckle like sometimes scooters. Mm -hmm. For the heavier riders, you can kind of feel like your weight is making it a little bit more sluggish. But this one, you know, it's not that fast, but it felt like it was going pretty much at speed. Another thing, I don't know if you can tell because it's kind of noisy out here today with the traffic, but it's really, really quiet when you're riding it. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's like sure. you're coasting. You can't even tell that the motor's on. Whereas, you know, other scooters like the, Re the Razor EcoSmart, it's got a chain drive. It's kind of known for like creaking and making a lot of noise. Yeah. And so, yeah, this one's really, really quiet. Uh, something else I noticed when I was riding it is that um, you know during the range test is there's a little bit of um, a little bit of stem flex to it right here, but it's like on a stand up scooter that would bug me because you're kind of holding on and sort of anchoring this to the scooter that way. But you know on a seated scooter you're really anchored back here, so I didn't notice at all during the range test um, that there was a little bit of stem flex here. But it's definitely you know more than you see on a stand up scooter. Yeah, and and one more thing, I know you mentioned it, but the seat the seat is actually good for my buns. Yeah, it felt pretty soft. That's my favorite thing about this thing is the oh. seat and the suspension. One thing that took me a, a minute to get used to is for a seated scooter, I'm used to putting my foot on pegs. Yes. So yeah. I had to tell myself, there's a deck, put your foot on the deck, put your foot on the deck. It's definitely different, but you know what's better about it, about not having pegs is when you're pushing it, you're not like whacking your feet on pegs or pedals. True, yeah. And then if you lay it down sideways, then it, like, it's gonna sit flat in the, in the trunk or wherever you're putting it. So pluses and minuses. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm a fan. Let's go back and check the official braking numbers. In our braking test, the flex came to a stop from 15 miles per hour in a fairly typical 15.2 feet. It uses cable operated front and rear drum brakes plus regenerative braking, which charges your battery as you slow down. They don't have as much bite as disc brakes, so it takes a firm squeeze to get maximum braking power, but you also don't have to worry about overdoing it. The levers are set up bicycle style with the front brake on the left side and rear on the right, which is the opposite of most scooters, but it's easy to switch them if you want to. You don't even need tools to do it. Initial Assembly is ultra simple. Latch the stem, install the handlebars with two bolts, install the basket if you want to, and we think you should, and charge it up. On our scooter, even the tire pressure was ready to go, but you should definitely check before riding. After that, there aren't any other settings. It's key on, twist, and go. Well, I guess there's one more. The first click turns on the scooter, and the second one turns on the headlight and taillight. They look nice, help light your way at night, and of course, help drivers see you. The cockpit area is pretty straightforward. It's got a bell and a battery gauge. There's no speedometer and no app, but that's typical for seated scooters in this price range. The battery gauge works well though. When I'm range testing, that's how I know when to turn around and head back to headquarters, so I don't end up pushing it home from the test course. With the Flex, I only pushed it half a block to get back to HQ, so if I were to rank battery gauges by how far I had to push to get home, I'd give this one an A+. The total tested range was 13.5 miles. Basically riding as fast as I could. Charging time is about five hours from empty to full, but of course only half that much if you plug in with 50% charge remaining. If you need more range, we've heard that a pro version will be coming in a few months, which includes a larger battery and of course a larger price tag too. I like the stout side stand, it's easy to use, looks unlikely to break or bend, and feels good when you kick it down. The grip tape on the deck feels good too. The front fender has excellent water protection, but you might want to extend the rear fender just a bit if you ride in the rain. The scooter has a water resistance rating of IPX4, which means it should do okay in light rain, but I I'd avoid downpours and deep puddles because water damage typically isn't covered by scooter warranties. Speaking of warranties, we used to give GoTrax a pretty hard time for having one of the shortest warranties in the industry, but that's changed. It's now one year for most of the scooter and 180 days for the battery and motor controller. Also, when you're looking at inexpensive scooters, it's good to think about whether you'll be able to get parts if you need them. For the exact details about the warranty and the latest price, you'll find a link down below and a coupon code. Using the link supports this channel, but you can also support us by just subscribing, liking this video, or leaving a comment. We read them all. Earlier I said that the Flex was more portable than an e-bike, but let's put that to the test. The Flex weighs in at 47.6 pounds, but feels a little lighter than that because it gives you so many places to grab onto. Pros of the Flex include, it's stable, it's easy for anybody to ride, relatively compact, and it's affordable. Cons include, it slows down a lot on steep hills, Acceleration could be stronger, and there's no speedometer. 
While you're doing your research, here are some of the Flex's closest competitors. The Razer EcoSmart is a famous scooter that's been around for a long time and set the initial benchmark for seated scooters, but the Flex definitely beats it. While the EcoSmart has wheels that are two inches larger and it's a little quicker when fully charged, it's much more expensive, noisier because of the chain drive, won't fit in your trunk, and the lead acid batteries mean it weighs almost 20 pounds more. Those batteries also mean it's gonna slow down a lot more as it drains the battery than it would if you used lithium ion. The Jetson Bolt Pro has disc brakes and it's got pedals, but you're more likely to need to use those pedals because it comes with a 20% smaller battery. It also has no suspension. The Jetson is famous for being that little e-bike at Costco and at other big retailers, but we have to warn you that Jetson's definitely on the low end of the market and there's a good chance you won't get good after-sale support. Over the last few years, Gotrax has been the most affordable brand that we could still confidently recommend. The Fido Q1S from Foro Motors is more portable because of its smaller wheels and is a much stronger hill climber due to its gear drive motor, but it's also much more expensive for basically the same performance on flat ground. So who's the Flex for? I think new riders will like the simplicity and easy throttle, while intermediate riders will like it for commuting or grocery runs as long as there aren't too many big hills. I can also see families getting two or more to ride around the neighborhood because it's recommended for ages 13 and up, and anybody who can ride a bike is going to be able to ride one of these. For me, I love that we're getting to test more seated scooters now because sometimes I just don't feel like standing up, I can carry heavy stuff without wearing a backpack, and the low center of gravity and big wheels make for a relaxed ride. At 500 bucks, we're already big fans of the Flex, but check out the links down below because if you're watching soon after we release this video, there's a coupon code that'll save you $75 and a link to GoTrax that helps support this channel. We'll also update it if other coupon codes come along. I'm Paul Somerville. Thanks for watching and ride safe.